This project has been made possible in part through the generosity of the Follett Software Company. Encyclopedia Britannica Educational Corporation. Okay, so what do you think Huck Finn learns from Jim during their journey? <laughs> Stuart, why don't you try this one? Uh, uh, you know the part where, uh, Huck and, uh, Jim, Yes, Jack. What does Huck learn from Jim? He learns about life and leadership. What was Huckleberry Finn at the beginning of his life? A baby. A child. Just like we all were. But when he got older and he met up with Jim, Jim taught him leadership skills, management techniques, an understanding of telecommunications, free enterprise, and the love of democracy and freedom. Jack! And my friends, that boy became a man. Mr. Patterson, what do you think you're... <laughs> Jack, I want to speak with you. Jack, what are you talking about? Management techniques? Telecommunications? Huckleberry Finn never heard of telecommunications. It's the 90s. Who hasn't heard of telecommunications? Jack, Huck Finn lived in the 60s, the 1860s. Mr. Kim, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Jack Patterson! It's not just how you say something, it's what you say, too. Why? Because someday you will be saying something important, and people will need to trust you and believe you. I like that. People will trust you and believe you. This is Kim. Yes? I don't think I'm going to forget about this when I get to Congress.
How are you doing? Smooth. Uh, Bill Garvin, captain of the soccer team. Phil! Jack! Sure bet for the athletic award. I hear you're a sure bet for the athletic award. Well, I don't know. Jack! Julia Rushmeyer. Julia! Excellent work with what you do. Jack? Richard? We're 12 points ahead of them in the cafeteria polls. Richard Manhouse, we understand your campaign manager, Howie Hunt, was expelled for going through Mrs. Watergate's desk after school. Howie was kicked out of school? I had nothing to do with that. I want to make that perfectly clear. But wait, isn't it true that he's been working diligently for weeks? World War II, the Pacific Theater. I assume you've all done the reading. Can anyone tell me one of the most important factors involved in the American defeat of the Japanese forces? Perhaps you would like to teach the class, Mr. Patterson. Richard, can you tell the class? Uh, the Americans were able to break the Japanese secret code with uh, superior information. The superior intelligence. Yes. Superior intelligence gathering. Good, Richard. Cracking the Japanese code enabled you. Like to teach the class. Perhaps you would like to teach. Perhaps you would like to teach the class, Mr. Patterson. prepared for tomorrow's discussion on John F. Kennedy and the events involving Cuba. Richard's killing us, Jack. This whole thing in your history class is wiping us out in the polls. 
We got no lead anymore. It's that stupid scribbling in class, Jack. Why? Why do you keep doing that? Because I'm bored. Bored? So what? Just keep your head up and pretend to listen. I don't want to do that. Why not? Because he might call on me. I don't know what I'm doing now, right? I look like an idiot. Already look like an idiot, Jack. This election is day after tomorrow. All I can say is you better do something spectacular right away if you plan on winning. going the library why Bobby I'm gonna teach that class tomorrow hey Jack the library's that way Tim, come back if you need any more help, okay? Miss Sanchez? Hammer, Jasper, Jefferson, Jolson, John, John, John. This is an outrage. Where do our tax dollars go anyway? What, we can't afford an encyclopedia with an article about John Kennedy? Wonder who else is missing. Why don't you try looking under K? K. For Kennedy. John Fitzgerald Kennedy. We've done this before. Five whole pages. This is great. This is great. I can get an hour out of this easy. Now all I have to do is read it. I guess you're stuck. Huh? Oh. I've been asked to teach a class. Heckenwall's history class? Yeah, how'd you know? I'm in your class. Oh. Jack Patterson, what leadership can be. Nice to meet you. Glad I can count on your support. Yeah, well, good luck stretching five pages into a whole hour. It's a matter of elaboration. You mean fabrication. Fabrication. You don't think I can do it? Oh, I'm sure you can do it. Well, thank you for the vote of confidence. I thought you should have one vote for something. We'll see how many votes I get. You mean after that Richard Manhouse kid walks all over you tomorrow? <laughs> we'll just find out who walks all over who. All over whom? When 
don't you step over here? I'm sorry, but encyclopedias don't circulate until we're ready to close. And you see, it's a, it's a reference book. You, you can't check it out until closing. I'm sorry. I didn't... Is there is there anything I can help you with? No, no, I'm I'm fine. Okay. What am I doing? Can you help me? You can start by reading that encyclopedia article. Did you know Kennedy authorized an operation to overthrow the government of Cuba and it failed? The U.S. Army invaded Cuba? No. The United States trained over a thousand Cubans who wanted to overthrow this guy named Castro who took over the country. And? And practically all these Cuban fighters were killed or captured after we trained them. Kennedy authorized the operation. I thought he never made any mistakes. No way. What? We were almost in a nuclear war in 1962. Right while Kennedy was president? Yeah, with the Soviet Union over Cuba. A nuclear war, I don't believe it. I wasn't even born yet. How do I find out what happened? Look in a book, maybe? You think? It's a long shot, but they are here. This is an outrage. You realize that none of these books are in alphabetical order? Whoever said they were supposed to be in alphabetical order? Why are you supposed to find anything in there? Car catalog. G H I K. Yeah. Knitting, knights, Klein, kitchens, king of Spain, king of England, king of hearts, queen of diamonds, jack of clubs, ace of spades. Kennedy. Kennedy's biggest mistakes. The Bay of Pigs? What's that? It sounds disgusting. Just read the chapter. On November 29, 1960, just after John Kennedy was elected, he was detailed on a CIA secret military camp authorized by President Eisenhower, which was training over a thousand Cuban exiles who to were return to return to their, to their country, country and overthrow Fidel, Fidel Castro. The plan is set for an invasion, Mr. President. An invasion? Yes, sir. We want to know if you're going to support our plan, sir. If we support such an invasion and it fails, we will undermine the credibility and and integrity of this country in front of the entire world. Now, how do you know that's going to work? I can assure you, as I have assured President Eisenhower, our operation will succeed. Yeah, well, I will, uh, I'll have to speak with my advisors, Mr. Dulles. General Lemnitzer, Admiral Berg. The Joint Chiefs feel that you should go ahead with the operation. It's been carefully planned, sir. Mr. Secretary of State? We hesitate at this point. We'll allow Castro's support to multiply. Mr. Secretary of Defense? I vote to go ahead. Very well. I trust your judgment, gentlemen. I hereby authorize this operation at the Cuban Bay of Pigs. However, absolutely no American forces are to participate in the actual invasion. By April 19th, Castro's forces had crushed the invasion, having killed or captured over a thousand Cuban fighters. I didn't think Kennedy ever failed. There must be an explanation. I wish I could jump on a time machine or something, just be there, you know? So what year do you want to go to? What's this? It 
works like a car catalog, but for magazine articles. You just look under Kennedy? <laughs> Jack, these volumes are split up into years. John Kennedy was only a junior in high school in 1934. John Kennedy in high school, what a concept. Hold it. First of all, there were probably as many articles about John Kennedy in 1934 as there are about you right now. I've been in a magazine article. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. So? Secondly, the class is about Kennedy and Cuba. Yeah, but this is interesting, too. Jack, focus. And right now, we're working on the Bay of Pigs. And that was in 1961. Right. Kansas kayaks. Kennedy. Don't just look under Kennedy. They reported on everything he did. Yeah. It's like 37 billion entries about him. Try something more specific. Cuba? Cuba. Hell of a beating in Cuba. K. Wheeler, ill life, 50, 16, 25, app 28, 61. What, what language is this? Library's closing. What? Look here. It's all explained in the front of the volume. You'll be able to figure out if you come in tomorrow. Good luck, Jack. Wait. You gotta stay. I don't have until tomorrow. How? All right. Each of these entries is a different magazine article. The first thing is the title. Hell of a beating in Cuba. Right. What's a K. Wheeler? That's the author's name. Oh, initials like Kevin Wheeler. Or Karen Wheeler. Now, ill. Actually, I don't know what that means. Okay, ill means illustrated. Pictures? Yeah, you're in luck. Good night, Carla. Oh, good night, Greg. Hey, I thought you had karate class tonight. Basically, it's the Life magazine that came out on April 28, 1961. Oh, on pages 16 through 25, tells you right where to go. <gasps> Sorry, I, I didn't know anybody was in here. Uh, Mr. Smith, is that you? Yeah. Uh, will you be sure and lock up before you leave, sir? No problem. Mr. Smith is in there. He said he'd make sure everything was locked up when he leaves. Mr. Smith, the assistant principal? Yeah, you too, Carla. Good night. Good night, Miss Sanchez. Good night, Miss Sanchez. Good night, Miss Sanchez. Sanchez. You too, Mr. Smith.
Wow, a lot of magazines. It's like my dad's bathroom. January 72, November 71, August 71. Well, keep going. We're looking for April 1961. No, that's it. It starts in 1971. 71, that's it? Well, that's just great. Somebody threw out all the old ones. Libraries don't throw out periodicals. They just make them smaller. never informed of any coral reef in the middle of the bay. You thought it was only seaweed, Mr. President. We're hit. Mayday. Mayday. We're hit. Houston. We're going down. Houston. Houston, respond. Houston. We are out of ammunition. You copy. We are out of ammunition. Just survive, ground command. Where are the supply ships? Where are the supply ships? Negative. The supply ships have fled battle. Tell your men to just survive. What? How? You told me Castro's ground forces were ineffective. You told me their air force was antiquated. We were wrong, Mr. President. Make a really great teacher. Believe in me. Everyone is a teacher, Jack. Some people just take it more seriously than others. Does that mean you'll stay? I got to call home. Great. Hey, don't think I'm going to forget about this when I get to the White House. Secretary of Education, think about it. Did you know the guy who wrote this article worked for Kennedy? He was with Kennedy when all this happened? That's what it says here at the end of the article. That's the kind of guy I want to get my information from. Somebody on the inside. Good plan. You think he wrote anything else? We could check in the reader's guide under his name. I wonder if he wrote any books. As we walked on the south lawn of the White House that Thursday morning after the defeat, the president seemed to me a depressed and lonely man. How could I have been so far off base? All my life, I, I've known better than to depend on the experts. How could I have been so stupid to let them go ahead? His anguish was doubly deepened by the knowledge that the rest of the world was asking the same question. You can't just trust the experts. You gotta go find out things for yourself. What's the story on this Castro guy, anyway? You mean his biography? Oh, did he have that? 
<laughs> what do you mean? Everyone's got a biography. Not in my family. Jack, do you know what a biography is? A biography is the story of a person's life. Come on. Castro took over the Cuban government in 1959. Just two years before the Bay of Pigs. Shortly after he took control, he announced his plans to implement communism and to develop a close relationship with the Soviet Union and its leader, Nikita Khrushchev. I guess they call that a close relationship. Castro had secretly agreed to let Khrushchev bring Soviet nuclear missiles into Cuba. Yeah, that's from the encyclopedia article. It almost went to nuclear war. But you know what? I don't get it. There was already like a million nuclear missiles all over Russia anyway. What do we care if there was a few more in some puny little country halfway around the world? <laughs> do you know where Cuba is? Are you kidding me? Everybody knows where Cuba is. So where is it? Cuba? Yeah. Oh, you don't know? No. Cuba. It's east. East? East-ish. Depending on where you are, it's west. Very west. You don't know where Cuba is. Yes, I do. No, you don't. So? Maps? How do you do that? With my index finger. This has an index built right in? A lot of books do. They were that close? The world was never closer to nuclear war than it was in October of 1962. The Soviet Union began an intense military buildup in Cuba early in the summer. August 3rd, 1962. Report of large convoy of military vehicles manned by Soviet personnel observed August 5th. Movement scene of 64 vehicle convoy including tanks and cannon-like August 13th. 1,000 non-Cuban personnel in fatigues seen working in an area believed to be a missile base. Five Soviet torpedo boats unloaded from Soviet ships. I don't get it. Kennedy knew about this huge military buildup in August. Why did he wait until October to do anything about it? By that time, the missiles were already there. So keep reading. Nothing. All it says is in September, Kennedy finally sent White House aide Sorensen to the Soviet embassy to lodge a formal complaint. Three. Three? That's what it says. Oh, three. That's a footnote. Cuba and Kennedy, the cause of the crisis. P.W. Schur, Oxford University Press, 1990. Another book? Yeah, you see, he got his information about that meeting at the Soviet Embassy from this other book, The Cause of the Crisis. You mean an author has to list where he got all his information from? Yeah, otherwise you'd never be able to check if the information is true. Well, we gotta get that book. I thought it'll tell us why Kennedy waited to take action. What's the author's name again? You don't have to look it up by the author's name. You can look it up under the title of the book. Is this another the title, too? Yeah, Cuba and Kennedy, The Cause of the Crisis. The car's not here. Then the library doesn't have the book. That's impossible. They probably just forgot to list it under the title. They didn't forget anything. Every book is listed by title, by subject, and by author. Every book. Not this one. How could it not be here? What's the author's name again? It's not here. We need this book. P.W. Sure. It's gotta be here. What subject would it be under? Causes? Stupid. Crisis. Do you know what time it is? Crisis, crisis is too vague. Kennedy? You just looked under Kennedy. Cuba? You look under Cuba for the title of the book. International relations. Jack, it's a good idea, but the book just isn't here. I'm onto it. Would you calm down? So you don't have this book. What's the big deal? Mr. President, 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 Mr.
So are you actually accusing President Kennedy of waiting too long before taking action in the Cuban Missile Crisis? Well, sort of. I mean, there was already a big military buildup in Cuba before he did anything. He probably should have prevented the missiles from getting there in the first place. Well, why do you think Kennedy waited to take action, Mr. President? Why did he wait to take action? Yes! Oh, you don't know? No! Actually, Kennedy didn't want to jeopardize a secret initiative. Plans were already set in place to get rid of Castro by destroying the capital of Cuba with the help of aliens from space. What? I need that book. Going. Most of the books on Kennedy were in the 900 section. It's got to be in there somewhere. Jack, you're crazy! Jack! What am I supposed to do? It's too bad a librarian isn't here. She could get on the computer network and find out what other libraries around here have the book. Computer network? Yeah, listen, Jack, I've got to get out of here. You know how to use that computer, don't you? Don't even think about it. You do, I knew it. I'm not going to sneak around any teacher's office. I just got accepted to college. Didn't you hear about that kid who got expelled for going through Mrs. Watergate's desk? It's bad enough we're even in here. So let's go. You can get the information in the morning. There's no time. We need it now. You're going way overboard with this thing. It's just for a class, Jack. What's the worst thing that can happen? Okay. Is there anything we can use to get in here? Like what? I don't know. A crowbar. <laughs> oh, sure. They keep one of those over in the fiction section. Are you out of your mind? No, because I bet they got something over in the nonfiction section. This is insane. I hope you realize that. It's not like we're going in there to steal something. We're doing research. What's wrong? 
You see, we have to connect with the big computer database someplace downtown over the telephone lines. Database? It's where all the information is stored electronically. So what's the problem? <laughs> we need the phone number. Well, it's got to be around here somewhere. I don't like this at all, Jack. What would it be under? I don't know. Library network or something like that. This is dumb. Let's get out of here, Jack. So only take a minute, right? Then we'll leave right away. I found it. I think we're on. I don't think this is it. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing in here? Answer me. Research. Really? Yes. On what? Kennedy. Kennedy. <laughs> what are you trying to find out? Specifically? Very specifically. Well, we want to know why Kennedy waited until the fall to take action during the Cuban Missile Crisis when there were so many shipments of Soviet military hardware that summer. Where have you checked? Reference section? Yeah, and Reader's Guide. Yes, I know. We found a reference in this book. Well, we just wanted to know if there were any other libraries that had the book. You have no right to be here. Give me the exact title on that reference again. Cuba and Kennedy, the cause of the crisis. You realize you could both be expelled for this? I'm a little surprised at you, Samantha. And who are you? Jack Patterson. Jack Patterson? So... This is what leadership is, huh, Jack? There it is. That's it. That's what we're looking for. There's a copy of the book at the university library. They have public access hours tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why couldn't this have waited until morning? For the past two weeks, my opponent, Richard Manhouse... Oh, the smart choice for president. Right. We're in the same history class. Mr. Eckerall's. Richard's been doing everything he can to show me up in class. I've got one day before the election, so I gotta prove myself. I'm gonna get up and teach the class tomorrow. Why would Mr. Eckerall let you teach his class? He asked me to teach class every day. <laughs> and the subject is John Kennedy? Yeah. Oh, because Richard did that 25-page report on Kennedy last year. It was quite well done. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help the you, God. is now being sworn in. You are watching live coverage of the impeachment proceedings against the president. Senator Eckenwell is about to open the proceedings. 
We will begin the investigation of the allegations against the president with Senator Manhouse. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President, recently you accused President Kennedy with mishandling the Cuban Missile Crisis. When asked why you thought President Kennedy waited to take action, you replied with a rather creative answer, and I think this panel would like to know where you got your information. I don't recall. You don't recall, Mr. President? You present the American public with baseless rumors. When great leaders don't know the answer, they find out what the answer is. They don't just make it up. You are deceiving the very people who expect to trust you and believe you. Jack? You didn't know Richard wrote that report, did you? Check out Jack's books before we go. Where are we going? The university library. The university librarian was my professor in college. Hi, Sid. Uh, it's Carla Sanchez. I'm sorry to be calling so late. I've... I've got an emergency. Hello? Yeah, Mom, it's me. Oh, Jack Patterson. What an inconsiderate son can be. Who's going to drive? Where you been? My mom's gonna kill me. Doing research, Bobby. Follow that car. We'll be back in less than an hour. I'll expect it to be here in the mailbox then, hmm? Yes. Thank you, Sid. I assume this is very important research you're doing, Carla. Oh. Is this for the government? Sort of. It's okay. It's okay, Miss Sanchez. Samantha? Got the title of the book. Select title. Now type it in. 
Okay, that's good enough. Hit return. You can do the same thing for the author and the subject. You know how the card catalog is set up? Same thing? Same thing. Hey, Jack, that looks like a good one. <laughs> What's so funny? I've taken French for three years. It's Russian, Jack. It's German. That's it. Let's get the book and get out of here. Let's just see if a copy's available. No way. It's been checked out. Probably won't be back for another week. Week? I don't have another week. Jack, sit down. This isn't always easy. Look, we're here. We'll find the information in another source. You have more than 20 other books on the crisis right there. Brinkmanship. Going to the brink of war. Yeah, can we look under that brinkmanship? Samantha? Sorry. The Soviets are constructing missile bases in Cuba and sending over technicians and experts to man them. The United States must take military action immediately. But where did you get your information, Senator? I am reliably informed, sir. Reliably informed? Where's his evidence? We cannot base the issue of war and peace on a rumor. We can only move with hard, substantiated evidence. Matt, what is it? You two surveillance flight you ordered? Yes. Look at this. There are offensive missile bases on Cuba, Mr. President. All right. Call an emergency meeting. I want more photography. You've got to be absolutely certain. Those missiles are actually there. We're going to have to show this evidence to the world. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Are these installations here, these, uh, these are the missiles? Yes, sir. But is there any evidence that the nuclear warheads are there as well? Well, there isn't actually any evidence that Mr. the warheads... Mr. President. The warheads aren't already there, and they're certainly on their way. Is there something around here that can tell me the difference between a missile and a nuclear warhead? A dictionary. Who would ever check this thing out? Who would ever take it off the stand? Warhead. That part of the missile containing the explosive charge. So if the warhead is what allows the missile to blow things up, if you don't have the warhead, you don't have to worry about the missile, right? That's right. I wonder if the warheads were there. Where? Cuba. They have photographs of Soviet missiles, but no evidence that the warheads were actually there. So? So if the warheads were there, 
they'd been snuck on the island without us knowing about it, then Kennedy was wrong. He should have listened to this senator who was warning him weeks earlier about the Soviets building a nuclear base in our backyard. If he had, we would have never let the warheads into our hemisphere in the first place, right? And if the warheads weren't there? Then the whole thing isn't such a big deal because the Soviets didn't have their gun loaded. You know, you've got a good hypothesis. Let me see. If the warheads they weren't there... So were the warheads actually there? Exactly. How can we find out? Did you this has a CD inside? CD-ROM. And that one has a whole encyclopedia on it. Mm-hmm. This is great. I brought you a few books. You could live back there. Wait till you get to college, you will. like the newspaper index at school, but you just type it in. Mm -hmm. Are there school libraries that have this kind of stuff? Sure. Why don't we? I'm working on it. Wait, look at this. What? High-level Soviet, American, and Cuban delegations meet for a two-day seminar in Moscow to discuss what actually took place during the Cuban Missile Crisis. What happened at that meeting? We're gonna find out. Hurry. It's not here. You gotta be kidding me. No. Somebody didn't return it. Or didn't want to return it. Don't you find it a little strange that all these vital documents just happen to be missing right when I need them most. I'm talking about political sabotage here. Oh. Well, I certainly hope you don't suspect me, Jack. Uh, don't be silly. Look. Shall we try some of these other articles, then? Does this work like the one in your office? Same idea, but the place we're going to hook into has a lot more information. It's ridiculous. How can anybody look through 5,000 articles? You don't. The computer does it for you. I don't get it. What's going on? We're narrowing it down. Did you find out anything about the nuclear warheads? No. Yeah. No, but I got a lot of other great stuff. Samantha, what is he supposed to go through all those books? I marked off pages. We can narrow it down. Good, let's take a look. 
Wait a second, I don't get it. Look at this reference. This doesn't have the word Khrushchev in it. It doesn't even have the word Warhead in it. Well, the computer isn't just looking through the references, Samantha. Well, then where is it getting all the words? In the text of the articles. This article looks like it might have something for us. All right, Mr. President. There are three options left. Invade Cuba, attack the island with a surgical airstrike, or set up a naval blockade. Mr. President, ahead, some of us believe that anything less than a full-scale invasion will appear indecisive. If those missiles do have nuclear warheads operational, and Khrushchev launches, while we're trying to invade, it's not going to make a damn bit of difference if the U.S. appears indecisive, because the U.S. won't appear on the map anymore. That would leave us with the airstrike and the blockade, Mr. President. All right. I want to see more research right away. Now, we're running out of time. I don't think an airstrike could be surgical. Now, we found out that Soviet MiG jets just arrived on the island. Those planes could attack Florida. Now we've got to bomb air bases, missile bases, and warhead bunkers if we can find them. We'll have to bomb the whole island. There's going to be a lot of dead Cuban citizens, Mr. President. Yeah. And, uh, and the blockade? The blockade could be long and agonizing. If nuclear warheads are already on the island, Khrushchev will have time to make the missiles operational. But if we airstrike and kill Cuban and Soviet citizens, Khrushchev will have to retaliate. Uh, blockade is far less humiliating. We've got to give Khrushchev the opportunity to remove those missiles himself before we try to do it for him. A blockade. So that's what we did. Of course it was a blockade. Don't you know the main points of the event? Do you know how the crisis ends, Jack? Yeah. I mean, we didn't have a nuclear war. No, really. Look, Miss Sanchez, you told me to concentrate on the question of whether or not the warheads were on the island. Jack, it's past 4 o'clock in the morning, and you don't even know how the crisis ends. Before you go chasing after specific issues, you've got to understand the big picture first. I got a lot of work to do. Jack, I'm hungry and I'm tired. You can make do with what you've got. I want to go home and... Hold it, Jack! Return to Earth, Jack! Don't you dare go off into one of your weird trances again. Sorry. It's just that when I woke up this morning, I felt like basically I knew everything there was to know. No, I mean, not everything, but pretty much everything. I don't feel like I don't know anything. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. There are more Soviet military personnel and weapons than anticipated, sir, and two medium-range missiles are operational. With warheads? We don't know, sir. This is Naval Communications reporting. The 18 Soviet ships are still heading toward the blockade. Six Soviet submarines have joined the other ships, Mr. President. You ought to sink any submarine interfering with the blockade, Admiral. We just received a cable from Khrushchev. It says if we agree not to invade, he'll remove the missiles. Dean, give me a copy of the translation. I want to reply to the Kremlin drafted right away. Mr. President, one of our U-2 planes was shot down over the island. Oh, no. Are we to retaliate? Not yet. Sir, the letter of response to Khrushchev is drafted. 
If they dismantle the bases under UN inspection, we will end the blockade and agree not to invade. You get Bobby to take this to the Soviet embassy right away. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in from Radio Moscow. Premier Khrushchev has sent a message to President Kennedy today. The Soviet government has ordered the dismantling of weapons in Cuba, as well as their creating and return to the Soviet Union. Mr. President! Gentlemen, please, calm, calm down. Calm down. I, uh, I want to make it clear. There will be no boasting, no, uh, no gloating, not even a claim of victory. We won this battle by letting our opponent avoid complete humiliation. Let's not humiliate him now. I, uh, I do want you to know how grateful I am to you. It was your diligence in uncovering all the information in uh, amassing the proper evidence and presenting me with all the possibilities for action which made our effort a success. I thank you. Have you uncovered the major events? I sure did. Did it say anything about the warheads anywhere? No. But whether or not the warheads were there, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? Well, if they were there, he did the right thing. And if they weren't there, he still did the right thing. I know why Kennedy waited to take action. He waited in order to understand the situation until we knew the truth about what was going on over there. With the Bay of Pigs, when he first got into office, he relied on somebody else's judgment, the experts. And they gave him only two choices, do it the way we planned or don't do it at all. His advisors told him to do it, so he did. And they were wrong. But later on, when another problem came up with Cuba, a much more serious problem, he learned from those mistakes he made before. He didn't just ask somebody else for the answer. He went after it himself. He learned everything he could about the situation, discussed all possibilities, not just one or two. And then he made the decision himself based on everything he knew. And the decision was the right one. I always thought Kennedy was great, but I never really knew why. But now I do. He learned from his mistakes. That's why Kennedy was great. He learned from his mistakes. If that's what you think, Jack, if that's your conclusion, then that's exactly what you have to say to your class tomorrow and prove to them that you're right. But there's still so much left to learn. I mean, I only know about these two events in this whole presidency. But you understand them well. But not well enough, not yet. Look, Jack, it's late, we're tired. You must know enough by now to teach the class. I know the basics, but I don't know enough of the details. The details aren't going to make the difference as to whether you win or lose the election. But that's not the point. Either I'm going to go in there tomorrow knowing what I'm talking about, or I'm just going to be like I always was. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive Seventh and finally, I call upon Chairman Khrushchev 
to halt and eliminate this clandestine, reckless, and provocative threat to world peace. What we hope to do is lessen the chance of a military collision between these two great nuclear powers, which together have the power to kill 300 million people in the short space of a day. Can we leave? Yeah. Did you get all the information you needed? No, I didn't start this early enough. But I think I'll be okay. The funny thing is, the one piece of information I really set out for, I never found. About the warheads? Yeah. Now, the poli sci department did a study a couple of years ago. Have you checked the vertical file? It's even closer to the brink of nuclear war during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 than has been previously thought, with warheads already on hand in Cuba for Soviet missiles targeted at Washington, New York, and other major U.S. cities. Two days before the crisis peaked, Cuban leader Fidel Castro sent a desperate message to then-Soviet leader Nikita S. Khrushchev, urging that the missiles be fired. Castro's message convinced Khrushchev that the confrontation had gone too far, and he decided to agree to U.S. demands that the missiles be withdrawn. Vertical file? Vertical file. Oh, God, we gotta get out of here. Just waiting for you. Samantha? Here, honey, wipe the drool off the book before we leave. Can you help me carry all these books out to the car? What are you talking about? I need this material to review it for class and have it standing by for evidence. No, Jack, you can't take those books without checking them out. Well, I'll bring them back tonight. Absolutely not. Okay, can you check them out for me? Jack, you are not a student here. You've got to get special permission to check these books out, and I am in no position to give it to you. Now, you should have been taking notes, not just marking off pages. Well, like, I really had time to take notes. Oh, wonderful. This whole night's a total loss. I can't remember everything without these books. You could photocopy them, Jack. No. Look. Sid Hoshaw is going to be checking his mailbox in 10 minutes, expecting to find his keys there. I've got to be to work in 40 minutes, and I can tell you right now, I am not going to pass the dress code. I cannot stay here, and I can't leave you here alone. 
I'm sorry. All right, Jack. I'll let you stay to photocopy the books without me. You listen to me carefully. This place opens promptly at 7.30. You have got to be out of here by then. I could lose my job over this, Jack. And then you leave no trace that you were ever here. Dr. Hoshaw's a fanatic about organization. He's just not as laid back as we are at school. Should I put the books back on the shelf? Oh, no, definitely not. Put them in the return book bin over there and take out those little slips of paper and throw them away. Okay. Have you got enough change? Here, I think I've got some. No, that's okay. We've got enough. Jack. Seven. Thanks, Miss Sanchez. Good luck, Jack. I'll see you in class. Thanks. You're welcome.
John F. Kennedy and the crises in Cuba. I assume you've all done the reading. During John Kennedy's presidency, there were two major events involving the island of Cuba, the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile Crisis. These events set the stage for what would become known as the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Bay of Pigs is, in fact, the name of the Cuban Bay where over 1,000 Cuban refugees attempted to invade their homeland, which was being run by Fidel Castro. Now, to give you some background into Fidel Castro, he had come to... Perhaps you would like to teach the class, Mr. Patterson. I'd sure like to try. <laughs> was a man who learned from his mistakes. Which mistake? An error in judgment costing hundreds of lives and the embarrassment of this country in front of the entire world. This is the story of the Bay of Pigs. If you can't get your hands on the facts, you will see. warheads already on the island aimed at major American cities like New York and Washington. In the middle of the crisis, Castro sends a desperate message to Khrushchev, fire the missiles. That's a lie. You're making that up. I want to make it clear, there will be no boasting, no, uh, no gloating, not even a claim of victory. We won this battle by letting our opponent avoid complete humiliation. Let's not humiliate him now. You know, Richard, 
I never would have believed it myself. It sounds so terrible. And I stumbled across this article. Accidentally. It came out 26 years after the event itself. So I guess most people just aren't aware of it. I certainly wasn't. I wasn't aware of it either. Of course, it's very surprising. Oh, of course. Extremely surprising. Hmm. Interesting. Motion to adjourn. This book is overdue.